Hi everyone, I'm Sachin Goel. I'm an interventional cardiologist at Houston Methodist Hospital and the medical director for structural heart interventions. Today I'm going to be presenting a case of TAVR or transcatheter aortic valve replacement for a patient with small aortic annulus. So here's our case. Patient is a 87 year old female uh, weighing 62 kilograms with a BMI of 22. She has history of atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and a prior pacemaker. No obstructive coronary disease was noted on prior angiogram. She presented with acute decompensated congestive heart failure. She was found to have low normal left ventricular ejection fraction, severe aortic stenosis, mild to moderate aortic regurgitation, and severe tricuspid regurgitation. She was diuresed and optimized from heart failure standpoint. And then a routine CT TAVR protocol was obtained. And these are the usual Thrumencio derived measurements of the aortic root annulus and the iliofemoral axis, as you can see here. So on the top left, you'll see the aortic annulus measurements. And this patient clearly has a small aortic annulus with diameters of 18 by 21 millimeters, min and max, with an average diameter of 19.7 millimeter indicating a very small annulus. Um, the annular area is about 307 square millimeters, and the perimeter is about 62.9 um, millimeters. Uh, along the same lines, the sinuses of Valsalva are, are small, measuring 23.5, 25, and 25 millimeters in maximal dimensions. Uh, then moving on to the right side in the upper panel, this is the left coronary height, which is about 8.8 .8 millimeters, and the right coronary height uh, is about 11.3 millimeters. Of note, a coronary height of less than 10 millimeters is uh, indicative of higher risk for coronary obstruction uh, with a transcatheter aortic valve replacement. And this is be gonna become important in just a minute. Here are the uh, LVOT measurements and the STJ measurements. And here is the axis. Again, the dim dimensions are suitable for a transfemoral TAVR. So this patient clearly has a small annulus a small sinus of Valsalva and a left coronary height that is low. She's 87 years old and a high surgical risk patient. So the question is, what do we do? So if you look at the hemodynamic echo core lab findings from Becky Hahn's paper back in 2018, when you look at the balloon expandable sapien valve, here are the echo derived uh, EOAs, mean gradients and DVIs with the 20 or the 23 millimeter sapien valve. This patient would be a 20 millimeter sapien valve. And you can already see the EOA would be 1.2 with a mean gradient of 16 after a deployment with a DVI of 0.4 uh, with either a 20 or a 23. And uh, you can see across the spectrum with the larger sapien valves also their DVIs remain in the 0.4 range. So for a patient with small annulus, a uh, sapien balloon expandable valve would uh, you know, would, would offer uh, hemodynamics with these kinds of gradients and a DVI of 0.4 uh, with uh, values in the moderate aortic stenosis range. In contrast, this chart shows the similar numbers for the self-expandable Evolute valve. And you can see the gradients are lower in the single digits, uh, especially from 26 valve, uh, with the DVIs in the 0.6 range. So the hemodynamics have been shown to be superior with the self-expandable uh, Evolute platform compared to the balloon expandable plate platform, especially in patients with small annulus. Uh, there is a randomized control trial which is ongoing, which actually has uh, recently completed enrollment. This is called the SMART trial. This is the head-to-head -head, uh, randomized control trial in patients with small aortic annulus, defined as annular area uh, of less than 430 millimeters squared. Uh, and our patient would fit this criteria. Uh, and 700 patients are randomized one-to-one -one to the Evolute self-expandable platform versus the Sapien 3 uh, balloon expandable platform. 700 patients uh, across 90 sites in the United States and Canada. Uh, the 12-month co-primary endpoint includes mortality, disabling stroke or rehospitalization, and bioprosthetic valve dysfunction. Patients will be followed up to five years uh, during this study. Our plan in this case was a transfemoral transcatheter aortic valve replacement with a 23 millimeter Evolute FX valve with left coronary protection given the low coronary height. And we chose the self-expandable platform, again, because this was a uh, small annulus. And uh, based on the data, the hemodynamics are superior 
with the self-expandable platform compared to the balloon expandable platform, particularly in this patient population. This patient, 87 years of age, and again, very high surgical risk uh, uh, candidate. If this patient uh, was relatively younger, then surgery would be a reasonable choice for this patient with a aortic uh, uh, annular enlargement to put a larger uh, surgical valve. Uh, so here is the procedure, uh, the routine TAVR procedure with access uh, in bilateral femoral arteries, a pacemaker uh, into the right ventricle. Uh, patient already has a pre-existing pacemaker. Uh, and this is the uh, pigtail catheter which has been placed in the non-coronary cusp. And this is the aortic root angiogram in the cusp overlap uh, um, angulation. So cusp overlap is where we isolate the non-coronary cusp uh, and put the pigtail in that cusp. And then the right and left coronary cusps are overlapped, as you can see here. Uh, this shows the nadir of the non-coronary cusp. And this is the view to uh, in which we deploy the valve, as you, you'll see in, a, in just uh, a minute. This image on the right uh, shows the coronary catheter engaging the left coronary. We take a picture of the left coronary system. And as pointed out, the, there is no significant obstructive coronary disease. And uh, our plan was coronary protection. So we consequently put a uh, guide extension catheter um, uh, into the LAD. And there is a stent uh, which is positioned inside the guide extension uh, and parked in the LAD, in the proximal LAD. We always take an angiogram here to make sure there's good flow around the guide extension or the guide liner catheter to make sure the patient doesn't become ischemic. Uh, during the course uh, of the procedure. Um, here is the uh, Evolute valve, which is a self-expandable platform, which is advanced uh, over a, a safari wire, which has been placed into the left ventricle. And uh, we typically put the hat marker on the outer curve, as you can see in this, uh, and then bring this around the arch into the aortic root. Uh, by placing the heart, our hat marker on the outer curve of the uh, descending thoracic aorta, we can achieve commissural alignment in vast majority of patients. Uh, then this image on the left side shows the uh, evolute valve positioned in the aortic annulus uh, in the cusp overlap view. Uh, and here is the angiogram uh, at 80% deployment, uh, showing, uh, again, good positioning, good placement of the evolute FX valve, about three millimeters below the uh, non-coronary cusp nadir. And we can see that, again, the coronary flow is uh, not compromised. There is flow into the coronary artery uh, in this view. Um, uh, as you know, the Evolute platform allows uh, recapture. Uh, if there is concern for coronary obstruction or any other position issues, we can always recapture and uh, redeploy this valve. So this is a very good platform uh, for these cases. Then we switch the uh, C-arm gantry to the LAO view. And you can see again at 80%, there is good uh, positioning, good depth, three millimeters on the left coronary side. And again, good flow in the coronary artery. Uh, with the guideline and the stent that is parked in the proximal LAD. Subsequently, the valve is deployed une uneventfully, and uh, this is the final aortic root angiogram uh, showing excellent uh, positioning of the valve, no aortic regurgitation, and uh, there's good coronary flow. Uh, the stent is not needed to be deployed, so the stent is retrieved back into the guideliner, and uh, by placing the guideliner tip just outside the left coronary ostium, we do an angiogram Again, demonstrating that there is good flow in the left coronary without any evidence of coronary compromise. So there's an excellent result here, mean gradient of eight millimeters of mercury with a dimensionless valve index of 0 0.6. Uh, again, indicating excellent uh, result uh, in this patient with small annulus. So in conclusion, the self-expanding Evolute FX platform provides superior hemodynamics in patients with small aortic annuli and should be preferred. The SMART trial is the randomized control trial, uh, which has been recently completed and will provide uh, further data uh, in patients with small annuli head-to-head uh, -head against the balloon-expandable Sapien platform. Um, thank you very much uh, for your attention.